Okay. Um, so what we so he shifts, he shifts, right? The the discussion shifts at this point. So that was the last piece in the educator's role. The next thing um, is the importance. He, he goes on um, just just briefly to talk about sort of the importance of education. Um, and this is not education in the banking concept. This is this is education um, in terms of liberation theory, right? In terms of sort of this 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 new concept, this new attempt to identify um, ourselves as liberated uh, human subjects. So the importance, the The importance of communication. All right, um, the mutual authentication of thought. The first um, thing and the first reason why communication is important in sort of uh, this pedagogical exchange is the mutual authentication of thought, right? What we recognize is that in, and I'm gonna have to change markers because this, I don't like the green because it's harder to erase. I don't know why it is, but it is. All right. So we have, quote unquote, the teacher and the student, and rather it being sort of unidirectional, we recognize that the goal that we're attempting to achieve is sort of this bidirectional exchange of information. I have information that I can give to the student. The student has a lived experience, has an existential sort of existence that can inform my education. And this sort of, this sort of back and forth between the instructor and the student is what we should be doing, what we ought to be doing. This is the mutual authentication of thought, right? Thought is authenticated, the thought of the student is authenticated insofar as the student takes the information that I've given him or her and processes, digests in the Sartrean sense, di di digests that information, but then doesn't just stop at the digestion of the information, reinterprets the meaning, the significance of that in, uh, information in terms of my life experience, right? So, you know, I read a book and someone says, well, what's the significance of that book? And I tell them, well, with respect to the way that I live, with respect to the way that I've grown up as a kid, this is how it's impacted my life, right? My own particular interpretation. And that interpretation then forms um, sort of the educational paradigm. It expands the educational paradigm of the instructor. As an instructor, I learned something that I didn't know before, right? So that both the student and the instructor are learning in this mutual authentication of thought. Um, obviously, there's no imposition of thought on the student, right? Because it's bidirectional, right? It's not just me learning, it's me and the student. It's not just the student learning, it's both the student and myself learning, right? The student and the, and, and the instructor learning, right? So there's no imposition of thought on the student. How is this possible? This is only possible with uh, authentic communication, right? I have to communicate in such a, a method that I recognize um, the limitations of my own knowledge. There's only so much that I know. What is it that I don't know? I specifically don't know the existential experience of all those students that I have. How do I gain access to that information? By allowing the student to speak their piece, incorporating that information back into my understanding, and this process goes on infinitely. Next point is, uh, and this is an actual quote um, from from Freer, it is actually my, my, my favorite quote in the entire, in the entire book. Um, authentic thinking, thinking that is concerned about reality, right? authentic thinking, thinking that is concerned about reality, does not take place in the ivory tower. Right? It doesn't take place in the ivory tower. It doesn't take place in academia, in a very fancy building, right? um, but only in communication. I'll read that again. Authentic thinking, thinking that is concerned about reality, does not take place in ivory tower isolation. Right? It doesn't take place in ivory tower isolation, but only in communication. So um, as an instructor, as a professor, I lecture and I operate, and um, my existence to some extent is subordinated by the ivory tower. Right? I, am, I am a constituent part of the ivory tower. Um, I, I, I am an educator, um, and I am within that ivory tower. But but I recognize, as an educator, that I can't remain within this tower. And this is what he's saying, right? He's saying that, as an educator, right, it can't be the case, oops, it shouldn't be the case, that here's the ivy tower, right? And here are the masses, if you will. Only a small, very, very, very small percentage, let's say 
small percentage, let's say, I, I don't know the, 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 the true numbers, but let's say 5% of the masses can actually make it into the ivory tower, right? And we're not talking about like, just like bachelor's education, maybe master's, you know, doctoral, specialist education, higher level uh, education. Let's say a very small number, and like I said, I don't know what the number is. Let, let me be a little bit more optimistic. <laughs> let's say 25%, right? So a small percentage of the masses can make it in the ivory tower, and this is where all the learning goes, right? So these people have the ability to be a little bit better than the rest of these people because, you know, these people have gained access to the ivory tower. What does he say? He says, authentic thinking, thinking that is concerned about reality, does not take place. It doesn't occur. This type of thought doesn't occur in the isolation of the ivory tower, right? It only takes place in communication. So what is it that the, the new um, humanist revolutionary educator, right, this new breed, this next generation of educators, what is it that we need to be? Well, I recognize that I have a function, I have a responsibility to those who gain access to the ivory tower. So for those who can afford um, to, to sit in one of my classes and to listen to me lecture, they get, they get, they get lecture, right? and I give them information. And I don't give it in the traditional banking concept. We exchange authentically information in the classroom. But what about the rest of the masses? What do they get? They, do, is it the case that they don't get anything? Well, you know, if you can't afford college education, or you didn't do well in your SATs, or you didn't do well in your GREs, oh, well, you know, sucks for you, you can't get an education. No, as an educator, I have a responsibility. What do I need to do? I need to break down this wall, right? And send some of that information here as well. And then wait for the masses to return that information to me, because I'm not just depositing information on the masses either, right? So that there's an exchange between myself and my students, but also a, an exchange, um, uh, sort of outside of the walls of this, this physical building that's surrounding me, right? So what, we, what, what Freire is saying is that as educators in the ivory tower, which is what I am, what I need to recognize is that my obligation is not only to those people who've made it within the ivory tower, the very small amount that has made it within the ivory tower, I have an obligation to make sure that this information is transmitted through communication, right? Through genuine, authentic communication to the masses, right? Hey, here's what I, here's what I think. What do you guys think? Here's my interpretation of Freire. Do you think I'm wrong? How do you think I explain that? Could I have done this better? Should I not have spent as much time on that? Blah, 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 right? In order to do that, though, I have to have a very huge sense of humility, right? Because I can be, I can be corrected. People can tell me that I'm wrong. I'm putting a, quite a bit out on display for the world to see, right? It's not an easy process to do. It's easier, I would argue, and Freire would back this up, to do it within the confines of the ivory tower because of its isolation, right? So, again, um, my favorite quote in Freire, last time I'll read it, Authentic thinking, thinking that is concerned about reality, does not take place in ivory tower isolation, but only in communication. Right? And that's a direct quote from uh, the text.